Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University and welcome to another of our weekly studies. Got a great, great question uh, from, I think it was, her name was Lindsay um, on the Facebook group and uh, saw this and it was just a, it was a really good, a good question for, uh, for us to take a look at. And the reason I'm saying it's a great question is because you don't often see, or at least I don't hear a whole lot about postural questions related to postural deviations and why um, ACE explains that, you know, during kyphosis, in Lindsay's case, she was asking why during forward head uh, posture is this group of muscles um, tight or shortened and this group is uh, lengthened? And, and it's a really good question because it's almost counterintuitive. And, and so what I wanted to do was to actually show you, uh, it, it's actually helpful because I'm going to draw it out for you because it's just a lot easier to do this. We'll talk about, we're talking about postural deviations, kyphosis, and I said versus forward head syndrome and or forward head posture because they, they really can be different, uh, different issues related to very similar uh, causes. Sometimes you'll, you'll have forward head posture without having kyphosis. So before I actually get to the, to the, the pictures that I have here for you, these images, let me just kind of explain this to help you appreciate because there's so many moving parts in the skeletal system, particularly in the spinal column. Remember, you have your head which is a single entity, if you want to look at it from a purely mechanical perspective, and it sits on the cervical vertebrae. Now it sits on what's known as the atlas, which is that very top cervical vertebrae. So it pivots, remember the, the skull pivots right on, on that vertebrae, but there's five vertebrae themselves and they all tend to act in a continuous unified fashion. So whatever the head does, whether it tilts forward or backward, laterally, um, it's going to cause distortion and or deviations in all of the cervical vertebrae, which also remember kind of the point of postural deviations is this idea um, that through the kinetic concept of the kinetic chain, all of the other, all the other vertebrae, the entire vertebral column, the pelvis, these are all going to be affected. So if you look in the, in the uh, textbook in the sixth edition, I uh, forgot what chapter it was, but if you look in there, it shows you these four postural deviations, lordosis, kyphosis, um, and those are the lordosis, not so much that we're looking at, but kyphosis is the one that really speaks to this concept of forward head posture or the syndrome where the head is forward. But just keep in mind that because of what I just explained to you about the cervical vertebrae, the head can tilt forward and backward, right? Now, just because the head position itself is forward or anterior does not mean that it's also going to tilt forward or backward. This is where it can get a little confusing. So when you're reading, uh, when you're reading through this first part of that chapter, and it says that uh, the kyphotic postural distortion has tight cervical extensors, they're, they're basically saying that, hold on one second, it's kyphosis. Kyphosis is what is causing and, and remember, kyphosis is this, this distortion of the thoracic spine. So normally what, uh, what a uh, therapist or a doctor will look at is from the, uh, from the side, they'll look at you from the side and they'll notice this uh, bowing of the thoracic spine. Now that is generally going to lead to, or it's going to have e very simply as a, another symptom of that is a distortion of the, of the a cervical spine and therefore the head. However, if there's issues that are related to the neck flexors and extensors or the positioning of the head first, in other words, if, if I have normal, um, normal posture, right? And then I start spending a whole lot of time in front of the computer, 
my head and, and postural deviations of my head are going to cause cervical issues that then could possibly cause um, kyphotic postural distortion. So you got to keep that in mind before we even look at this. Now, if you understand that the head and the cervical spine are going to do things related to what's already occurring in the thoracic spine, okay, um, this will make sense. If you, if you also understand mechanically that kyphosis, which is what uh, Ace is speaking to in that particular part of the chapter, if it's kyphosis that's causing the neck issue, then, then it's going to make sense why the extensors are tight and the flexors, uh, neck flexors are lengthened. Okay. Again, generally the question is, is what is the cause of the deviation in the neck? Is it starting with head forward movement this way, where you would probably see shortening of the cervical flexors, lengthening of the extensors, um, initially, but for sure, what will end up happening is through uh, increased kyphosis in the, in the thoracic spine, you're going to start to see the head posturally distort upward. And that's what's going to cause the shortening then of the extensors themselves. So um, what I want to do is just, again, kind of show you here, I can draw it for you to make it, it's going to make more sense if I do that. So let me go ahead and put this on here like this. And I want to show you uh, what this kind of looks like. So this individual in the image obviously has a forward head posture. Um, and what you'll also notice, that's why I want you to kind of look over here. Let me kind of draw this little arrow. If you notice here, you don't necessarily see this extensive kyphotic, uh, kyphotic issue. What you notice more than anything, obviously, is right in here, this increased. Now, remember, we're, we're looking at an already um, forward head postural, postural position, okay? So the head is already forward, right? The head is already moved forward. And look at the position, look at the position of the, of the eyes, the way the eyes are looking forward, and the head is properly positioned upward like this, okay? Although the head is forward, you have this increased lordosis. Now you see, I'm just messing, just drawing all over this. You see this increased lordosis. Remember, lordosis is going to be the, um, this inward curve of the cervical spine. Kyphosis is the outward curve of the thoracic spine. So in the lumbar spine, you also have lordosis. So in the, in the postural distortion called kyphosis, that is an over-exaggeration of the normal curve in the thoracic spine. So in this case, with this forward head position already established, as you can see here, what we want to look at and focus on from the perspective of, of lengthened or shortened muscles are these guys right here. So the cervical flexors, and the cervical extensors, so the cervical extensors, okay? So flexors and extensors. If you look at it from here without, without understanding what the normal spine looks like, it's gonna be hard to discern or decipher whether, whether these guys are shortened or lengthened and whether these guys are shortened or lengthened. What Ace is telling you is that these guys right here, you would think that they'd be shortened, but they're actually lengthened. And as Lindsay had noted, let me see if I can get an arrow in here. What you would assume is with the head forward, you would assume that these guys are lengthened, right? You would assume that these are lengthened and extended because the head is forward. Well, yes, but here's the problem, is that it's all related to the head, not necessarily the position of the neck itself. Let me move on and get to a clean slide for you. So think about what I just said. Let me go back here for one second. It's not the position of the neck necessarily. It's not the position of the neck in relation to the thoracic spinal column, it's the head itself. 
Remember the head can tilt forward and the head can tilt backward. It's the position of the head that's going to determine whether or not these guys right here are lengthened or shortened. If you notice that from this position with the head in the position that you see here, not necessary to look at this guy, but right here, notice, look at the, cervi look at the cervical vertebrae, how they are tilted back. If you notice that they're tilted back like this, that makes more sense because here there's normal, normal length of the extensors, the cervical extensors, but as the head moves forward more, the compensation is for the head to also flip backward. And because of that, okay, I hope that makes sense. Let me, I'm gonna try and uh, make, make some more sense of this for you. Okay, because the head is moving forward, right? If you notice that the head moves forward from this position in, and by the way, what I'm saying is in relation to a perfect postural position. So you'll notice now the ear is coming over here and now the ear is coming. Okay, so obviously the head is jutting, with the head jutting forward, what you notice is that the extensors, you see I'm drawing right here, these extensors now have to tilt the head backward. And because they're tilting the head backward, they are shortening. The flexors, the flexors are already in a sh relatively shortened position because the head is, you know, somewhat tilted down. But as soon as the head starts to tilt back, as soon as the head starts to tilt back more and more, these guys actually lengthen to accommodate the head tilting back. I hope that makes sense. It's not, it's not difficult conceptually to understand. You just got to be able to appreciate that it's not necessarily the position of the head to the body. It's the position of the head, right, as it rotates on top of that or pivots on top of that top um, cervical vertebrae. And because the head is tilting back to accommodate, right? I got to look forward. So the head is going to tilt back to ensure that my line of sight and my visual acuity is looking forward. Because of that, my head has to rotate backward and a, and a rotate and a head that tilts backward or um, extends, the head extends right? Extension is occurring, right? The head itself is moving back, which means that's being accomplished by the shortening, the shortening of the cervical extensors. If the cervical extensors are shortening, then obviously the cervical flexors are lengthening. Now, here's where the confusion lies, obviously, is that all the muscles that are related to the um, uh, to the vertebral column at the thoracic level, right? And the cervical vertebrae. Now those guys, yes, for sure, you're going to see, uh, for instance, let me draw it in here, the levator scapula, for instance, the levator scapula shortens, of course it does. Um, but that's just a, for instance, the idea is that we're not so much concerned with, um, with that, with the levator scapula, just as a, for instance, but I just want to make sure, I hope that makes sense. Um, because I, trust me, you know, stuff related to, related to kyphosis and lordosis and some of these other postural deviations can be a little confusing. I'm just hoping, that's why I wanted to, to draw it for you like that. So you understand and appreciate, remember it's the head, it's the tilting of the head that is being, that is being, um, uh, mediated by the extensors and the flexors of the neck. But remember, there's, there's a lot of other musculature, right, from below down into the, into the clavicle and into the upper, 
upper part of the thoracic spinal column. So I hope this is helpful. And as you can see, my my dog is uh, getting a little bit impatient, so I have to let her out. But I hope that this was a helpful, uh, helpful study. Again, Lindsay, thanks for asking that. And remember, folks, if you have any questions, Corey and I, by the way, we do a, uh, a Q&A, live Q&A every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on and ask us the same same questions or just uh, look for that link. You can actually send you can actually send the questions in to us again. Uh, let us know any questions you may have related to the materials. Remember, we want you to pass the ACE exam on the first attempt. I hope you all have a great weekend. See you.